Good morning and welcome. My name is Pastor Guy Roberts, a pastor, one of the pastors here at Zion Lutheran Church, joined this morning by Pastor Bruce Nunning. And we are so glad that you are here with us this morning online and via the radio to worship and give praise to the King, to receive his word and to be his people together. As you know, and as you have received members of Zion, um, for us with the spike of COVID in our community and so many people in our congregation uh, having been uh, contracted the virus over the last week or so, um, we've taken the additional voluntary step of closing our in-person on-site worship. Our plan is to do that this weekend and the next three weekends and to reevaluate as we come to the end of that period. In the meantime, we'll continue to be here online and available for you throughout the week to join in on worship on the radio and our drive-in service at 1030 will still be here uh, for you if you'd like to come and see the faces of friends and family here at Zion. You all are invited and we are glad that you are here with us today. As we gather, there are just a few things then to take note of. Our hymns for today, for all of you listening on the radio or at home and have a hymnal, 813 is one of our hymns. We'll sing verses 1 through 3 and verse 7. Hymn 829 and hymn 917. Again, those are hymn 813, 829, and, and hymn 917. Also, uh, we're going to try something different since we're not here in person. We're going to provide opportunity for you to share your prayers at the beginning half of our service here. Those will come to Pastor Bruce, who will pray them later in the service during the prayers of the church. If you have any prayer requests, you can uh, email uh, Sarah uh, at Zion, oh, I'm blanking on the, ZionLutheranDL at gmail.com, ZionLutheranDL at gmail.com, and, uh, or you could text me at 218 Eight five zero one two three nine, and those are the options for you. And we'd encourage you to take advantage of that. Uh, just go ahead and send those prayers to us, and we'll make sure that they get into the prayers of the church. May God's peace be with you today, as we worship, as we gather. Even though we're apart, we are one in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We began our worship together by singing hymn eight hundred and thirteen, verses one through three and seven. Rejoice, O pilgrims, throng. Remembering when God claimed us in our baptism, we hear those precious words in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, if we say we have no sin, we're deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for silent reflection to name before God any particular sins we are struggling with. Let us then together confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We respond to God's grace who joyfully forgives us by praising him in song, the song Glorify Thy Name. be with you. And let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this Sunday is from Ezekiel chapter 34, beginning with verse 11. God is speaking about how he will search for his sheep, his deep concern for the lost and straying. He says he will feed them good things, 
And we know in the church the good things he feeds us is his word, his sacrament that nourishes and strengthens us in our faith walk. Hear the word of the Lord from the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself will search for my sheep. I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines and all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, I will strengthen the weak and the fat and the strong, I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your thorns till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be the prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 20. And in this particular reading, the Apostle Paul is making a comparison between Adam and Christ. Adam, who brought with his sin, original sin, into the world, and because of that, all must die. But Christ came, defeated death, by rising from the grave, and gives to us the certainty of eternal life through faith in Jesus. The last enemy, death, has been defeated by Christ. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then it is coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday is the text the one on which Pastor Guy will deliver his message from Matthew chapter 25. It gives us a picture into that last day when Christ returns. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. 
I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick and in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them. Truly I say to you, as you did to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you did not welcome me naked, and you did not clothe me sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, stranger or naked or sick or in prison, did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. And these will go away into eternal judgment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As Christians unite, it's good that we join together in support of what we believe concerning the triune God. And one of the statements of faith is the Apostles' Creed that we will join together in making profession at this time. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next song, and for those on the radio with the hymn book at home, is 829, Christ the Eternal Lord. Thank you. 
and we pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, this day that you have made is a chance to learn and to grow, to be strengthened and sustained, to be comforted and to be brought hope that we know that we belong to you. For this, then, we give thanks as we listen this morning to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What do I have to do? This is the age-old pragmatic question. So much of life is driven by this. What do I have to do? Just take anything, any list of challenges or struggles or things to be overcome in this life, and then we ask, what do we have to do? And we make lists and we make plans, and then we do. All of us ask it, all of us wonder it, and all of us will be asked it someday. And in most of life, this is great. But when it comes to those matters of faith and salvation and hope in Jesus Christ, the question has a different answer than normal. For what do I have to do? And so I know you're going to be asked about it because I'm going to ask you about it this morning. If you're at home listening on the radio, if you're home uh, watching this morning on your computer or TV, and you have the ability, I want you to just go ahead and pause and talk about it. What is it that you have to do? What is it that the Lord requires of you to be righteous, to be saved, to be a sheep? What do you have to do? So what did you come up with? What do we have to do? If you're talking about this at home and you pause it, or if you just had the thoughts running through your head here in live time as the sermon goes, I was wondering how many of you said nothing. Jesus has done it all. How many of you have said that? For this is the profession of a Christian. This is what we speak, what we teach, what we confess, what you've heard your, your whole life from pastors in this pulpit and others. There is nothing you have to do, for Jesus has done it all. The profession of a Christian then sounds like this. Lord, I have nothing to offer, so save me. Lord, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. Lord, forgive me. Lord, have mercy. And he does. We read in Scripture, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. We read in Scripture, Not by works, but by grace. We read in Scripture that our righteousness is Christ and Christ alone. And it is with this and with all of this in mind that we approach our parable today, the parable of the sheep and the goats. Because without the fullness of the gospel and the message of what Christ has done, this can be somewhat misleading. And that part of our hearts, that part of our lives, that inclination for us to say, what do I have to do right there in our heart? Well, that'll jump out. That will grab a hold of this parable and lead you down paths that you don't want to go. And so we read this one again, keeping in mind the context. We've talked about this the last few weeks as we've gone through these, but Jesus begins by right before he goes to the cross, speaking to his disciples, saying, no one knows the day or the hour, only the Father knows. And then he moves into a parable of the ten virgins, in which some half are prepared and half aren't. All of them belong, but half then go to find oil. He comes when they're gone, and they are locked out. And then we read last week in the parable of the talents, where there are three servants, faithful and given the work of the master to do, and they take these investments, and two of them take these investments and double these investments and give them back to the master when he returns. And one says, I knew you to be a hard man, and went and buried it in the ground. And there's a warning there for us. And it's with these, then, these messages coming before that you see today the parable of the, sheeps and the sheep and the goat, and then you see what follows, which Christ being prepared for the cross where they begin to plot against him. He goes to the, he's anointed, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, and then he's arrested, and he takes that journey to the cross. So it's with this in mind that we revisit this parable. 
where Jesus says that the master will return, the shepherd will return, that he will come in glory, and there will be then, there on the earth, sheep and the goats. They will already be there. It's not something to be determined or be decided. This is the way it was when he shows up. And there's hope in that for those who are sheep. He turns to the sheep then, and he says to the sheep that um, you uh, may enter because you served where there was hungry, you fed them where there was thirsty, you gave them something to drink, you, fed, you clothed those who were naked, you visited the sick, and on and on and on, and they don't know when they have done this, and they said, whenever you did this to your neighbor, you did this to the least of me. And then he turns, he turns to the goats, and they then have harsh judgment. But the same thing, whatever you did not do this to the least of your neighbors, you did not do this for me, and they are cast out. Overall, the parable is not difficult. But for us, as Christians, I think we find ourselves getting in trouble here, because I just got to ask you again, let's do some review. Who are you? Are you the sheep? Well, let me say it different. You are the sheep. There's no doubt. There's no question. You are the sheep because Jesus, the shepherd, has called you into his flock. The crowd asked this question of Peter when he is on Pentecost and he's preaching his sermon. The Holy Spirit has come upon him. He stands up before the crowds and he preaches of Jesus Christ. And at the end, when he is done with his sermon, the Holy Spirit is alive and he is active the crowds ask the question, what shall we do? And he says, repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. For this promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone who the Lord our God calls to himself, everyone that the Lord calls unto himself through the waters of baptism. If you have been baptized, living your life in repentance, following the shepherd, you know that you're the sheep. There's no doubt he has done this great work, and you don't have to wonder. You belong to him, the shepherd, and that makes you a sheep. The parable of the sheep and the goats is told just hours, as we said, before Jesus would go to the cross. I mean, just a short amount of time before he would take those first steps of suffering and torture and pain to the cross. And it's there on that cross where our brokenness and sin would be nailed to his cross with him. And so when we approach this parable, it's important to let that stand and to know that is what saves. That is what had to be done. And then trust and hope and cling to the gift that has been won for you. The Lord there on the cross did that so that you could be brought into his flock as his sheep, led by him as your shepherd, and be called by him into his heavenly glory on the last day. So when you read this parable, what's with all the feeding of the people and the giving drink and the welcoming strangers and clothing and visiting the sick? What's that all about? Well, this is just sheep doing what sheep do. You see, we don't have to do anything because Jesus has done it all. But that doesn't mean Jesus doesn't have a lot for us to do. Let me say this again. Um, we don't have to do anything. Jesus has done it all. He alone has saved. But that doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't have a lot for us to do. Your whole life is there then and have been one for you that you can live every minute of it in a world full of people and an entire creation that is in need of stewards of God's creation to serve and to be there for them. 
God says to live the commandments is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and to love your neighbor as yourself and your neighbor is certainly in need. And so your hands, your feet, your very life is there as a gift to those around you. And apparently, there are goats out there too. There are those who don't know him, who maybe have rejected him, who need to hear desperately about him and to be brought into the fold. There are sheep who have wandered and are in danger, and they are there for us as well, to reach out and to serve. And in the freedom of Christ's cross, we can. When our Lord and our shepherd returns, when he comes back, he will find his sheep. He will call them unto himself. And you and I, and hopefully all that we know and love, all the people we know and love in this world and have come across, all of us will belong to him in glory. When his judgment comes down, there will be no need to worry. There will just be the faithful voice of the shepherd. So as we read this parable today, we say two things to ourselves. Remind ourselves of this every day. The first thing is this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for calling me into your flock that I may be your sheep. And the second thing is a question. Lord, what would you have me do for my neighbor? It's just what sheep do. Oh, and there's one other thing. Something we should pray every day. Lord, are you coming back today? Amen? Amen, we pray. Almighty God, your word is cast like seed into the ground. Now let the dew of heaven descend and righteous fruit abound. Amen. We take a moment here in this form of worship to greet one another in the Lord. If you're sitting with others in your house, I take, take a moment here during this time to greet them, bring God's peace. Um, I think you can still hug people in your own home, so go for that. And, uh, and then if you're by yourself, just go ahead and, and uh, text a few people. Maybe call someone later after church and share God's peace with them. And we greet each other in the ways that we can. worship service at this point we would see, receive first fruit offerings but you still can do that you can do that in one of two ways you can mail 
your offering to Zion Lutheran Church, Post Office Box 926, or you can uh, go online at Zion Lutheran DL and uh, find out how to have automatic withdrawal done through joyful response. We continue our worship with the prayers of the church. Thank you, Lord God, for the fact that there is nothing we need to do to earn the precious gift of eternal life. We take the pressure off of us. We don't have to wonder whether we've done enough because Jesus has done it all for us. And yet we pray, O Holy Spirit, move us to joyful responses which seek to let the love of Christ shine through us and works of service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, forgive the sins of our nation, especially so the verbal sins, attacks, slanderous talk of politicians and citizens said prior to the election. Now, Lord, unite our nation, humble all of our politicians before you to learn to lean on you in prayer and to learn how to work together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this day and lift up to your throne of grace, all those infected with the COVID virus, both locally and within our, within our nation and world. We also remember Helen Whippick, Jana Sonnenberg, Brenda, sister-in-law of Steve Carlson, Mary Lou McCullum, Daryl and Mary McKenzie, Jeff and Julie Resnicek's grandson. Look down upon all these people, Lord, in your grace and mercy, and may you enfold them to your arms and give them exactly what they need, first spiritually, that they may grow in their trust in you, and secondly, physically, according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Remember the families of the following people whom you have called home to your surf, yourself, the family of Kurt Sigelski, the family of Vinton Vogler, the family of Jerry Ortlip, the family of Whitey Mackner. Lord, look down upon these people, give them comfort and support, both through your word and through the support of the body of Christ. May they know the depth of your love, who has defeated death, that we need not fear it, but live in the joyous knowledge of the gift of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. We celebrate with those who have anniversaries this week, myself and my wife, Chad and Jennifer Schlauterhoff, Thomas and Elaine Mack. May they reflect on the blessings of life and give you praise. May you continue to enable them to be faithful first to you and secondly to their spouse. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We also rejoice with those who celebrate birthdays this week. Janelle Boomgarten, Christine Hennis, Gordon Staub, Harold Triebenbach, Sandra Delkey, Calvin Kangas, John Tormolan, Lucas Amundsen, Jill Brandt, Carla Brogan, Cherry Post, Kipton Schlatterhoff. As they reflect on life, may they also give praise to you for the life you've given to them, especially the life in Christ. May family and loved ones remember them as they celebrate the day of their birth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. All these things we pray in the precious name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his favor upon each of you and fill you with his peace. Amen. Amen. We close our services at Zion with a mission outreach prayer. In this particular prayer, we invite people to call to mind people they personally know. Uh, be that a family member, a neighbor, a co-worker, a friend, an active member of our own church, who the Lord may reach through you, I invite you to pray with me. Lord, Lord God, God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, 
Someone I know needs your grace and mercy in their life. Give me an opportunity this week to talk to the person I have in mind who needs to hear of your love. Keep my eyes open for the opportunity that I know you will give me. Make me bold and courageous in my witness or invitation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our closing song today is Savior again to thy dear name we raise. For those at home and the radio, that's in the hymn book number 917. 917. This concludes our, our worship for this morning. Thank you so much for being here with us today online or on the radio. We are so glad to have you here with us. And a special thank you, gentlemen, and, and Sharon Harstick. What beautiful music you offered here today. I would ask the congregation to give thanks to the Lord uh, if they were here, but they're not. So just one cl two claps. But imagine a whole bunch of people at home clapping <laughs> to you. Just a few announcements about how we're going to be doing the next few weeks here of worship. Uh, many of you have received the email. Many of you have re uh, received for us the, um, the video announcements. But there are many within our congregation that are tech, I call them technology free, meaning they live life without the complexities of this. Um, the way it's going to work, I would encourage you if you're listening to this and you know one of these members to reach out to them and to share this as well. We will be sending a letter out in the mail next week, but it'll take uh, most of the week to get there um, as, as a result. So as we, as we move forward, the next four, three weekends after today, for sure, we are not going to be holding in-person um, uh, services here on site. And so that means we'll still have our online, our, our radio, our TV broadcast later in the week, and also our drive-in service at 1030. And all of these options will be available to you. We won't, we'll not be having communion during this time, um, and so we'll resume that hopefully when this four-week period comes to an end. But we're not sure. We're going to play that by ear, see what happens over the next three weeks. I encourage you to continue to pray, not only for our community, but for our membership and just ask that the Lord give us wisdom as we try to uh, navigate these turbulent times. 
So as, you, as we look forward, there's some midweek services that we typically offer. Uh, this coming week there on Wednesday, there is a Thanksgiving Eve kind of worship service. We will offer that online. That will be recorded so that you can use it with your family as well. We're exploring radio options, but there's no, um, for, we haven't had received an answer on that yet. So stay tuned for that information. And again, any of the, your, our Advent services then as we're coming up, the, at least the first two will not be in person. They will be online. And again, hopefully if we can work it out on the radio as well. And so as we, as we go about this life together um, in faith, just continue to pray and thank you again for your flexibility and your patience and your prayer and concern for one another. I guess I would make one more request. If you are sick, um, please reach out to Pastor Bruce or myself. Um, we are, we, as Pastor Bruce has kind of joked about, we don't count a lot of times when it comes to visiting. Um, we are able to visit where other people's aren't, where in some situations we're viewed as essential. And so if you are sick, if you have a loved one in the hospital or, or the like, please, I just want to encourage you to reach out and contact us. As we continue, just a few announcements then here for us. We're, gonna, we're continuing on with our Zion apparel sale. If you're interested in that, there's uh, information online that you can check. Um, it's more probably now more than ever to stay connected. Make sure that you're signed up for the What's Happening email. And if you wish to donate uh, a poinsettia in honor of a loved one and, and mostly in honor of the Lord, then those are available. There's, uh, go ahead and contact the church office and you can do that. With that being said, these are our announcements for today. Though we'll be having discipleship hour via Zoom. There's a contact uh, link for that uh, on our email, and hopefully we'll see many of you there. May God's richest peace be upon your week.